بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Again, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Thank you for joining us today for our second day of Muqtamar 2020 I'm Hanan and I will be moderating the session today This event is currently live on YouTube as well as Zoom A Massive thank you to our sponsors and to the Muqtamar planning committees IMSA, MISG for organizing Muqtamar this year and making sure we can connect and reach as many people as possible Thank you to everyone who played a part in developing this session. So I'd like to welcome you all to our cultural event on Culture Day, of course, and I encourage everyone who is able to, to turn on their cameras and showcase their batik or baju malayu. Um, of course, our speakers aren't wearing batik today, but apparently they're going to explain that. Um, <laughs> so Muktamar is the one place we can see as many people that we share such a unique, specific cultural and religious identity with at a time. As such, we want to create a fun space where we can reconnect with our roots as suited for our experiences as Indonesian or Malaysian Muslim youth in North America. I'd like to welcome our two presenters from our own communities, uh, Amir bin Hamza and Honest Kashidi. So I'm going to real quick introduce them. So Anas, uh, he went to Indonesia for high school and Egypt for college, and he currently resides in California, where he is working at the Indonesian consulate. As for Amir, he is Malaysian, and he grew up in Dallas and is working in accounting at Sunoco. Uh, he's currently married, so everybody congratulate him. Mabruk. <laughs> uh, before I hand it off to them, I'd like to briefly overview the event. We will, inshallah, be learning from their presentation, and then we will go through a game. So, yep. Inshallah, we could start, inshallah? Yeah. Okay. Uh... Can everybody see my screen? Yeah, we can see it. Okay. All right. Honest, you want to kick it off? All right. Cool. Uh, Bismillah. So, Mutamar Social and Cultural Event. Interesting. We have, you know, coming from Mutamar, it's the Malay and the Indo community coming together, mashallah. Um, and I feel it's it's really nice to really showcase to see what our you know what our cultural heritage has to offer for us you know because I feel like you know every people and us growing up we have our own specific exposures to culture right some people may be well in deep being like oh super Indo or super Malay and some people may just know to a grasp of like you know some things that they think of nostalgia, right? Like food, um, clothing, a bit of language here and there and whatnot. But inshallah, we'll try to, you know, um, all learn together and see and share, you know, what we can get from like, oh, what this culture particularly being from Southeast Asia has to really offer, right? Um, so we can, I guess we can move on, inshallah, to uh, the next slide. Bang, Amir. Okay, so um, nice. just a disclaimer, um, we are going to be using the chat a lot, so please be courteous to your brothers and sisters. Um, but, um, you know, not to kick it off, uh, you know, Indonesian Malaysians were like a minority in the United States, on top of the Muslim community. So, you know, it, to us, at least to me, it's, you know, the culture helps to kind of define who I am and my identity. and. Like Muktamar, for instance, is like the one time of the year that I really get to enjoy showcasing that because, yeah, my community, we have a pretty good Malaysian uh, community and Indonesian community in Dallas, um, even in Houston, the bigger Texas population. But, you know, just kind of being with the overall country, it kind of helps define who I am and it makes me feel like my culture is important. Because a lot of time, you know, I went to a school that there wasn't too many of us and my university there wasn't a lot of us either so sometimes you can feel a little bit alone you know in that aspect so that's that's at least my opinion on that yeah, if i could totally jump on that as well um you know just seeing how like just going back to like the importance of culture and identity and everything um i feel like really interesting um you guys can really check out imam Sahib webb's uh talk that was the first session he talked about you know how you know, 
uh, there's this monoculture of where we're living, for example, if you're living in the US or whatnot, where it's like this one culture of being, you know, westernized and so on and so forth. But then it's like, and then we have culture on one hand, you know, Islam on the other, and then you're like this person, you're a student, and that person. I feel like um, there has to be a need for where we can synthesize all of this together into becoming that person of who you are, right? It's not like, oh, I'm just Muslim on one end, and then some other days I'm like Indo on other and this and that. But like, I feel like the goal is to really own all of these identities that we have all together and combine them. Um, to be like a force to be reckoned with. Uh, just like, for example, like um, coming through with like the whole culture thing of, you know, sharing culture together. Um, I could totally, we could totally like bump up with the chat and like, you know, who's hashtag team Malaysia and who's hashtag team Indo. Put it in the chat right now. Let's see what's good with this. <laughs> and interesting of uh, the meme right here, you check it out. <laughs> it shows if we check all the meme, um so here uh if you can see my arrow it's like because interestingly enough you know malaysia and um indonesia very similar yeah very similar to the untrained eye you know they're like the same people right it might even kind of be on a stereotypical level where it's like oh you guys are just asian right but then there's like some differences here there where they're like you know they really have their characteristics in between this is what i feel is the unifying kind of place of being southeast asian right so there's the maling sialan so if anyone knows that uh maling is like it's like uh a rob uh, a robber right or something maling like that yeah so like someone that steals or whatnot and sialan someone so this is kind of a bit like off the cuff kind of like uh, abrasive right because there's like this kind of like beef rivalry between oh who owns this who owns batik who owns rendang and stuff like that <laughs> right and then that's the indo side and then thief there you go thanks and then you have the malay side it was like uh jurubu i don't know what that means bro you, you, have, you know that or <laughs> <laughs> call it call us off you will but i know this word uh, ending dog in indonesian and malay that's a very that's a very, uh, it's like a curse word pretty much, right? Very yeah. bad. Yeah, don't do that, please. But then the thing is, interesting enough, people learn language through curse words, but just don't know that. <laughs> and then it says here, the Singaporean on the bottom part, puff, miskin, 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 miskin. So like when you say, when, when someone says like miskin, uh, what a pity, you know, these guys are just like fighting it off, this and that. But then I think this was like a couple years back of like, the whole fiasco of like um this cook-off i think um i don't know amir you could explain more there's like the rundown crispy yeah it's like <laughs> when something insults our entire area we become like one and unified and but in essence we really are like one you know one people and like we should all be like brothers and sisters regardless of where we're from uh, whether it be from Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore, Brunei, you know, we're really all just the same people, right? And to love one is to love all, right? So that's my take on that. Brother. <laughs> Good words. It's, so just, just to end this meme right here, it's like, rendang, crispy, apakah ketayan ini? So what is, what is this? Like the, uh, the Malay uh, thing is saying, and then it's like, yo, UK taken down and everything. Uh, this happened like a while back where uh, I think like a judge said like your rundang is supposed to be crispy and like what what <laughs> right and so that was what went down and that's what united the Malay countries mashallah oh, right so <laughs> alhamdulillah yeah. um but yeah that's a blast for me uh, crispy rundang but yeah so uh, so this is basically a big geographic area of the, or geographic map of the entire, I guess, island in Southeast Asia. Um, we're going to break out just kind of the regions and provinces of each country. Um, Honest, do you want to go first or? Oh, yeah. So uh, just answering this question, where am I from? Um, so Indonesian? 
But more specifically, uh, if you could see that arrow right here, or no, around here, it's Central Jawa. So specifically, I could type it in the chat as well. Um, my parents are from Chilachap, if you guys heard of that. So that's Jawa Tonga, that's middle Java. Um, <laughs> fam. <laughs> and so yeah, Chilachap, that's uh, where my my family is from, right? So, good stuff. And I could, uh, pretty much we could turn this into like an activity. So I'll popcorn to Abang Amir. Where oh. are you from? I'm actually, so I was born in KL. Um, but like my kampung is actually in the state of Pera, which is a little bit north of Kale. That's where my kampung is at. Um, and like I've kind of grown up, grow up there with my family and whatnot. Um, so I'm going to go to popcorn to Fudley now. Um, and Fudley can either, I guess he has the option of talking or writing the chat, but just popcorn somebody else after that. <laughs> Wait, so am I supposed to say like where where you're from, basically. Where I'm? Yeah, where you're like from. Like my parents? Like my parents? Yeah, do do like where you're you're kampong that or your parents are from. Kampong, kampong, uh, the one I guess I'll identify with is uh, Bukit Tinggi. So just like in the, the center of like the city. Basically that's from and I really like going there, you know. Um, let's see, who am I going to popcorn next? Popcorn, Ishan, Rizki, in here. I think he's praying. Oh, he's praying? Okay, I'll go with Bashir if he's here. Alright, uh, uh, where I'm from, right? Uh, yeah, so uh, my kampung is in uh, in Bandung. That's where I go when I'm there. And also uh, from my dad's side is uh, Purwakarta, which is like the, uh, from Bandung to Jakarta is like in the middle. So, yeah, so basically just like a Sunda background. But yeah. Do I popcorn it or were we supposed to do anything else? Yeah, you can popcorn. I'll popcorn it, yeah. All right, I'll popcorn it to... Uh, Azam. Azam, see in the chat? Can they unmute? They may be unmute. Yeah, they can mute. Yes, all right, I could now. See, I am from, oh, well, I was born in Jakarta. That's that's one thing. And my background would be Bat uh, the Batavians, Batawi. Uh, where in Jakarta would be in Jakarta Timur. That's where that's where we uh, used to live before moving to America. Same goes with uh, Shafi and my my other sister, except for the new one, which was American. And yeah, that that's that's me. But my mom comes from uh, Central Java. Same, I think, pretty close to Anas. Uh, I'm not too sure what it is, but I heard my mom uh, mention uh, his village before. So Wait, can that's kind of cool. Our our mom. Go ahead. Manggung and our dad half Sunda half um, Betawi. That's where we're from. Cool, cool. Noted. Inshallah. I I really want to popcorn to everyone, but it's like a hundred people here. That's true. <laughs> we could like. It's a lot. <laughs> I mean, I guess we could like kind of like um utilize the chat as well. Let's let's keep it let's keep it litty, inshallah. Um. So do you think I should popcorn somebody or not? <laughs> yeah, we, we could, we could. A bit more, a bit more, inshallah. All right, cool. uh, let's, let's go with, um, let's see. Yo, um, Ra'is Ashraf. Okay. Where am I from, right? Uh, I was born in Jakarta, but, uh, my mom and my dad are from Banda Aceh. Oh, Aceh. So, let's, uh... Honestly, you think we should wrap it up? Um, yeah, we should. We, we had, there's more popcorn stuff, so don't worry about it. Keep the chat uh, up and around. But yeah, it's really, it's really cool to hear everyone coming from and whatnot. Because, you know, sometimes I have some of my friends and they're like, 
like they've been to Indonesia or uh, but then they don't really know like where they're at in Indonesia or like where they're really from because they might have not really gotten the conversation of asking and so on and so forth. So it's really interesting to see how like where we're coming from, right? Um, just to get that little spice into that. <laughs> Speaking of spice, mashallah, spice islands, uh, we'll get into the history of a bit of Indonesia and Malaysia. I'll start, inshallah. Uh, that's cool. So uh, Indonesia, um, is, this is like a small overview. You know, you could go through like wiki and see what's good with it. But, you know, before Indonesia, the term Indonesia itself, it had many names. You had Nusantara, you had, you know, the Dutch East Indies because of the, the Dutch as the colonizers. Um, you know, before Islam, as many of us has been born into and has taken, um, you had animism, which is like they were kind of one with the nature, right? They saw nature and spirits and so on and so forth. And that was, there was their beliefs and traditions. And then, you know, uh, the Hindu empires of influence of Hinduism. That's why you see in spe specifically in, in Jawa. When you visit there's lots of like hindu kind of influences right and then buddhism as well so bali is where like i guess you could say a stronghold of where hinduism is still up and kicking right and then you move on to like the 17th century which is like uh you know four centuries ago even so interesting enough with islam coming into indonesia or that area specifically um islam was at the point of falling and if we know islamic spain so when you think of islamic spain you think of you know andalus right that's a term that i feel um that is really interesting right how islam in the west really started or had a, a civilization per se the andalus islamic spain so when that was um quote unquote uh islam was you know being extinct in that area where you only see like like architecture and so on and so forth uh, Islam was growing in Southeast Asia, which is very interesting, where, you know, Islam is like falling in one area, but then it's growing in another area. And through the spread of that, you have, you know, many ways of how Islam spread through the Arab traders, through the Wali Songo, interestingly enough, the nine saints where, um, you know, these preachers, these da'is, they spread Islam through the customs and traditions of the people. For example, you have the Wayang. The Wayang is a shadow puppet where they used to have, um, you know, the shadow puppetry showcasing and then they would show about like uh, things of akhlaq, things about like um, Islam, and the five pillars and so forth, right, through that medium. So that was used. Um, but during that time as well, when Islam was spreading as well, colonization happened. You know, you had the Portuguese, the Dutch, the Japanese. Interestingly enough, you have all these cultural influences coming from each of these um, cultural uh, colonizers, per se, right? Not to say um, that they were good and bad in one, in one case, but at the end, you know, there's that big fusion where you have in Portuguese, for example, you have, um, this is where I'm going to, uh, I'm going to defend <laughs> Amir for his use of the shirt, yes. Kameja, in Indonesian. Kameja, interestingly enough, comes from the Portuguese. Kameja. Like when you say meja, meja, it also comes from Portuguese, which actually is a loan word from Arabic. Kamisa. Kamisa, Kameja. Kamisa. So it's like, it goes two ways, right? And that's how like language and culture evolves. Interesting enough, right? You have the Dutch as well. Um, we'll get more into that of how like their influence is through food, through culture, through language as well. You have like, for example, Kuei uh, Labaran. We'll talk about that as well in a bit, how that influenced the Indonesian cuisine. The Japanese, there is an interesting story of how I think it was Gajah Mada, one of the great uniters of the archipelagos. He said that um, there would be a time where there would be white people that would conquer the archipelago, the archipelagos for some good 300 years, and the Japanese 
or the yellow people for some couple of years. But that couple of years with the yellow people, funny enough, would be the most uh, excruciating or the most severe of that time. Um, and interestingly enough, if you ask your dads, uh, your parents, um, it really went down like that, right? Um, and that was during like these times where the um, occupation happened. And then post-colonial and Indonesia of today, uh, Independence, Tujublas Augustus, the 17th of August, 1945. You have the Republic of Indonesia today, where um, there was a saying, and that's a tall tale. I don't know if it's legit or not. Kursi, uh, Kursi is chair, yeah. But it comes from the Arabic, so that's something, right? Um, where they said like, oh, um, the the challenge is not to do away with the oppressors, the colonizers, but the challenge is where the oppressing is going to happen within yourselves, right? The battle between the brethren, right? How are we going to deal with Indonesia today? Um, that's a small bit of Indonesia up to today. So I could pass that on to Amir. Okay, so Malaysia. Um, I actually have a lot written up, but for the time, I kind of want to shorten it a little bit. Um, so, mm -hmm. like, pre-colonial, um, basically in the first century, we kind of established trade routes with India and China, and then eventually, India and China had more of influence, and they kind of formed uh, empires. Um, and to name a few, we have the uh, Kingdom of Pahang, Kingdom of Ganga Nagara, um, the Buddhist Empire, Sri, Sri Vijaya. Um, those lasted through the 13th century, um, kind of taking control over the land and you know, utilizing the resources and whatnot. Uh, limited resources, I should say. Um, and then Islam came, th uh, came to the region, I guess, via Arabic tra Arab traders, and uh, they brought Islam to the region. Uh, that kind of stopped, put an end to the Hindu and the Buddhist empires at the time, because, um, you know, they kind of fell apart after Islam kind of, in a way, took over the area. Um, and you had a whole bunch of sultanates form, with the first being the Malaccan Sultanate. Um, and he, that was one of the, that was the original sultanate at the time, until the Portuguese came. Um, once the Portuguese came, they kind of, broke that apart and some of the members of the Malaccan Sultanate kind of moved to Johor, which is another state in Malaysia. And another one moved up to Perak, which is another state in Malaysia. And they kind of formed their own Sultanates. Um, then the Dutch came, uh, the Dutch came and they actually helped, they teamed up with the Sultan of Johor, pushed the Portuguese out and the Dutch kind of laid claim to Malacca, basically. Um, you also had the Pahang Sultanate and the Selangor Sultanate. Uh, interesting fact, though, the Selangor Sultanate was formed by the Bugis people. So I think that's the, I think if I'm right, uh, if I'm maybe, I may be wrong, but that may be the only state in Malaysia that's formed by Bugis. Um, so you have the colonization. Uh, Malaysia's been colonized by multiple different countries. Um, Portuguese were first, then, like I said, the Dutch pushed them out. And then Thailand kind of has some control over the north, northern uh, states. Um, the British kind of had the most most influence on on Malaysia. And when they came, uh, they kind of they actually established control. I believe in 1824, uh, when they did that, they pushed the Dutch out of out of Malaysia, and they let Dutch keep the rest of the East Indies, which is basically Indonesia. So Mal uh, Malaysia was now under British uh, colonization. Um, and during World War II, the Japanese came and took over Malaysia. And the British, they did not expect the Japanese to come from the north. Uh, they, they, I, they were heavily guarding Singapore at the time, which was part of Malaysia. Um, and the Japanese actually rode on bikes through Malaysia and they were able to conquer it that way. Um, so just some interesting fact. Um, now, Independ uh, Malaysia was able to get independence on August 31st, 1957, uh, a little bit after Indonesia, about eight, eight or ten years afterward. Um, and the first prime minister was Tunku Abdul Rahman. Um, he was the first of the eight prime ministers that we have today. Um, and, and then right now, Malaysia today, we have currently have uh, Mohyuddin Yassin, which is the prime minister of Malaysia. And 
uh, basically he he's 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 our prime minister today, basically. So on to the next slide. So honest, you want to take over? Yeah. So um, colonization, as I said, you know, lots of influences of it happening from the language itself. You have, for example, um, the word, let's see, does anyone know the word for school in Indonesian? Sekolah. Sekolah, right? So just the spelling of it itself. Um, and then going off, how about uh, university in Indonesian? Universitas or kulia as well. Interestingly enough, kulia comes from the Arabic kulia, but universitas comes from the um, the Dutch. Whereas I feel like in, in in Malay, it would be different with universitas, right? In yeah. with university. A little bit. Yeah, I think it's just university. University, because I feel like the the British influence has a bit more to that in that sense, right? Um, so, like, just language here and there. For example, you have uh, handuk. Handuk is towel that comes from the OE. So you have, in, as well, in Indonesian, the the pre-modern kind of spelling with the OE and the Js as well. Not like your cakes Js, but the Js. Um, the Y, Yogyakarta being Yogyakarta if you've seen that before. Um, that comes from the Dutch spelling, right? And so that's why as well, you have the foods that come into play, right? So this, the Reuter, the Reuter. So this, I feel um, to the Indonesian household, wherever you are, I've seen this, like at my household, at other people's household, the, the chocolate sprinkles. And that is not necessarily Indonesian, like from like traditionally speaking misses misses or seres those are like indonesian brands they all of these come from the dutch kind of cuisine right toast and then you have like even bread itself is not necessarily an indonesian kind of um food item like traditionally speaking roti because roti you know we have it from india you have it from like just influence everywhere uh, and I, I'm pretty sure, like, well, we can talk about, like, roti and everything, right? But, like, toast, even the oven, right? So, like, thinking about Indonesian food back in the day, it's, like, everything was all steamed. And the steaming in Indonesian, kukus. If you think about that, kukus, so you have, you know, a kueh, that's kukus. It's steamed, this and that is steamed. All of that is steamed, right? Oh, yeah. So the Dutch oven coming from the Dutch is a new thing. Uh, cocos is steamed, right? So you have like the different, the butters as well, the usage of milk, uh, mantega, that's all Dutch as well. So all of these um, are like new influences that combine into like the fusion cuisine that Indonesia has itself. Blue band as well. Well, yeah, that's a small um, part of colonization and its influences. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. All right, so um, yeah. Malaysia, uh, let's see. in Malaysia, the majority of the influence was from the British. Yeah, the Portuguese, the Dutch, the, um, the Thai, the Japanese did have some sort of ownership of the country, but the British left the most yeah. influence. So I'm going to just go over theirs. Uh, number one is English. Majority of... Uh, a majority of you know Malaysians speak English now. It's they they do have more of the nationalism. They speak a lot of BM, but they they do have a pretty good English po uh, speaking population. Um, in addition, uh, rubber and tin are two metals or two I should say uh, resources that weren't really um, I guess how I would say taken advantage of until the British came along. Being number one, the rubber actually was brought over by the British from Brazil. And tin, now the Portuguese and Dutch did have access to tin, but they didn't have, I guess, the, the infrastructure to be able to fully take advantage of it. 
Um, now, tin is a lead export, uh, one of the lead exporting products that Malaysia has, along with rubber. Uh, multiculturalism. Now, Malaysia, uh, or when the British came, they, a lot of the Chinese and the Indians came uh, to help, you know, the British brought them over to um, help you know, with the rubber and the tin plantations and whatnot, um, food. When those people came, they brought their influences with their food. And over time, it kind of developed into Malaysian cuisine. And lastly, British culture, I mean, British architecture. A lot of the buildings in Malaysia, they have a, they look like they're from the UK. Um, namely in KL, they have a whole bunch of, you know, the, there's a lot of buildings that I can't remember the exact ones, but they, they, a lot of the infrastructure looks like, you know, British architecture. In addition to, they have all these roads and railways that the British kind of had influence upon when they were in control. So. And then I'll pass it to Honest. Yeah. Cool. So, and like, when we think about food, you know, we're all hungry, right? We could have a um, virtual mukbang in a bit, inshallah. Um, but, you know, you have similar ingredients, right? Um, I, I guess, like, this is not complete. Maybe, like, people in the chat, you know, you could see, like, what other ingredients are there that is, like, very used in, like, Indonesian and Malay cuisine. You could put that in the chats, right? So we have santan. Santan, uh, starting off, <laughs> bro, Michin straight off the bat. <laughs> MSG, the good stuff. Uh, santan is, like, um, coconut milk, right? And then you have kicap manis. I think in Malay it's kicap, right? Uh, yeah. The the pronunciation mm -hmm. kicap, which is sweet soy sauce. Uh, you have bras. So bras is the rice grain before it's cooked. Uh, and I think it's usually uh, jasmine rice over here, the sticky rice. Um, you know, for for example, if you like, you know, biryani and stuff. That's I think that's a basmati. Um, you have pandan leaves. So pandan, uh, usually you see that it's like the green. Uh, it's a it's it's pretty much like the the green natural food coloring that you have in like different. That's why like you see like many desserts, many kueh. They're like very colorful. Uh, from that, you have lemongrass as well. Uh, it's I don't know my mom. She's like I, I just noticed like, well I'm I'm helping out as well. And then like you know you have like all these things like thrown in. You have um. Uh, interesting kaya kaya not meaning the kaya as in like rich but like you heard of sri kaya and nonya kaya so it's like uh, i think i've seen the translation it's pretty much coconut jam right so kaya toast right there yeah sri kaya um that's good stuff right so sometimes it's it's you know it's very very exclusive but you know it's uh hidden treasure man I'm gonna keep it <laughs> alhamdulillah i mean there's lots of stuff as well i mean we're going with food and everything but yeah um, it could uh go along with uh similar but different things I mean. okay so um again this is not a complete list so please add to it whatever you guys think to the chat um similar but different we have rendang you know malaysia has different rendang than uh, indonesia different styles as well as satay uh, nasi Udo, I guess, is the same as Indonesia's version, Nasi Lama. Um, also, Martabak. The, in Malaysia, Martabak Manis is Apam Balik and, mm -hmm. you know, vice versa. Um, onde Onde, Indonesian Onde Onde, the green, I believe Indonesia and Onde Onde is a green one, the green balls, right? With the coconut uh -huh. on top. In Malaysia, that's called no, uh, no, onde, onde Onde is the... Um... It's it's the sesame ball. Oh, right, right, right. Sorry. Onde Onde in Indonesia is a sesame ball, but we call it kue bom. Um, whereas mm. the green ball with the coconut uh, in Malaysia, that's called Onde Onde. Whereas in Indonesia, it's called clip one. And yeah. um, all the kue hari raya, they're all, you know, they're similar, but we all have different versions of it, different variations of it. Like kue lapis is another one. I think Malaysia is a little bit different. I don't know. It's just so many different ones. So, yeah, again, <laughs> <laughs> please add to the chat what you guys also, you know, uh, any additional things that you guys might want to add to this list? For sure. And so here's like a, so, a collage of different stuff. <laughs> so we have um, just break on the top left. We have nasi tumpeng, nasi tumpeng. So it's like nasi kuning. It's usually for like special occasions. You don't really see this on the side streets of like in the streets of like Jakarta or something like that. 
Um, and then here, I think that's the the onde onde, right? Yeah. Next one. Yeah. The yeah. coupon. And over here, you have all these assorted kind of quiz and stuff. Um, you have. It looks like laksa. Laksa. I think in Indonesia, you don't really have that. Oh, uh, that that may be just a Malaysian dish. I think that's oh, influenced yeah. by Chinese. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the Chinese influence as well. It's pretty big. Um, on the bottom left, you have nasi padang, or the way they uh, serve it. They have so many different dishes, um, and it's it's a real treat. I feel you know just to experience that and see like all these dishes in front of you, if you visit um, Padang or like Indonesia, for example. And over here, you have the one and only roti. <laughs> roti chana or roti bom? Looks like yeah, no, it could be either. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you have like all these assorted foods. We could, I think, you can continue on to the next slide. All right. And more stuff. And so interesting enough, I was talking about you know how the Dutch influence on food had with Indonesia. There's a small story about the kue hari raya or kue labara. Um, the these small cookies that we have for like um for the button right so like pretty much these are oven right they're put they're baked and everything um and this one the top right, left let me see is nastar right nastar which comes from the dutch nanas and tar which means tart or pie so the story goes to where you know uh European cuisine had like apple pies or blueberry pies, um, right? But then when going into Southeast Asia, they couldn't find apples or blueberries. So they had to substitute that with nanas or pineapple. <laughs> so that's what went down, right? With uh, with that. Um, and then kas tango as well, cheese. Kas means cheese in Dutch. Tango is um, long stick, right? So you have that as well. It's also... Uh, a, um, a Dutch influence thing. You have Maggi, Maggi, which is like the Indomie to ma Malaysia. We have Indomie in Indonesia, Maggi and um, Malaysia. Ice kacang on the bottom part. And then Teh Tarik right here. Teh Tarik, that is the star right here. So Teh Tarik, you literally pull it. <laughs> I haven't seen it. I don't know if you've seen it, Amir. Like, go down. <laughs> And then rookie tissue gets it gets really tall. Like it's like my height, basically. And I'm like five something. Um and then you have Eschendal. And it looks like Sati Ayam. And I don't know what this last one is. What is this? Uh that's tempe. So oh, it's tempe. like I think yeah, tempe. So specifically tempe mandoan. So if you heard, it's it's they half fry it and then you know uh, it's good stuff right. right so it's like see all the stuff of food <laughs> everyone's going wild but yeah okay so uh in terms of language i think this is a really fun one um like an honorifics in language you have where you call people depending on their position or their age. So like, what do you, in the chat, you can guys say, um, what do you guys use to call other people in your uh, language, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, in your, you have mas. I know in, um, yeah. You have mas, you have om, Abang. you have pakde, abang, pakci. <laughs> Chat's going wild. So, I mean, just a, just a quick fun fact. Uh, in Indonesia, the, the, the language Indonesian, they, because Indonesia, there are so many different tribes and, you know, um, 100 or 300 plus, right? So they have, like, for example, if you're from Java or Java, you, you're, like, it's predominantly Javanese. If you're from like a Sunda kind of tribe, Sundanese, 
uh, Padang, you speak Minang and like Sumatra Aceh, Bahasa Aceh and all these different ones. The unifying language that was used in Indonesia is Bahasa Riau, Melayu, right? And that's the standard uh, Indonesian. But yeah. So yes, um, thing that we like to at least go over. Um, in Malaysia, there's there's a lot, but I mean, just some of the, to shorten it a bit, uh, a lot of people say like Amboy or Alama when you mess up, like Alama or like Aya or Ayo. I guess those come from the different, um, depending on where, which type of ethnicity you're from. Um, La is a very common one. Also, Singapore says that a lot. And Jur, which is really Aja, for Indos, we kind of like say J or J E or J E L A, depending on like the context, basically. And then oh, Indonesians will wow. be by. Um, yeah, there's a whole kind of section of the. We could go to the next slide. So okay. Bahasa Gaul means like street language, um, but there's like there's like this Quora uh, picture that I got. It's uh, Bahasa Gaul versus Bahasa Malay. So Bahasa Gaul, pretty much, if you read on the thing, it's like slang, like street stuff. But then ally is like some next level over exaggerated kind of language that you use. So let's see the examples. Let's see. Bahasa Gaul, makan yuk gengs. And Bahasa ally, you could type it out. Um, makan yuk gengs. Right? So it's like all of that, you know, it goes over exaggerating and whatnot. And my love as well. Gaul, sayangku, and then ally. Chayangku, right? Hey, all, all the all the cheese, right? All the cheese. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's that's Indo for you. But yeah, we can move on with this as well. <laughs> okay, so this one we can just do like a everybody put in the chat just for time, just to save time. Um, now, uh, what was this popcorn game about? Let's see, you could just. Do you want to do this one on us since people? We can skip it because we have a Kahoot game next. Yeah, we, I think we can skip it because we did some uh, popcorn, yeah. Okay. So, honest, you want to start it off? Yeah. So, uh, with my shirt, per se, we had Batik Day. But I didn't go for Batik Day because, uh, interestingly enough, I wanted to show something else. Uh, this is a lurik. A, a lurik is something that's uh, worn in the Japanese. So it's striped pretty much. You have, but then for Indonesian clothes, you have like so many different ethnicities, as I said, from Japanese going everywhere. I think there's like a showcase on the next slide, inshallah. You have the sarung, which is very specific as well. But Jukoko comes from the, uh, the Chinese um, influence to where, you know, it's, it, it became like an Islamic attire in uh, Muslim attire in Indonesia. But it came from the Chinese as well, if you see uh, Baju Koko, you have that. So Batik as well, it's also shared in a sense, but yeah. Okay, and uh, with, in Malaysia, we have Baju Melayu. Um, there's different variations of it. Um, I'll show you some pictures later. Um, but um, traditional is where Baju Melayu and a Samping and Songko. Um, and depending on the, uh, like there's different meanings to the Samping length. Uh, you can tie it, like, I don't exactly remember the, you know, what they are, but sometimes, you know, a mar married person can tie it or have a different length than a non-married person, for instance. Um, you also have baju kabaya, which is a, uh, the woman's outfit, along with baju kurung and baju pengantin. Um, this is usually a songket uh, material with the tanja, and you can wear a kris and all that. Um, and I have more pictures of it later. Yeah, you go straight to the slide for pictures. And so here you have a showcase of many things. And this is just not the only clothes that um, Indonesians, I guess, in the traditional clothing. On the top, you have Achenese, you have uh, Nusa Tenggara Timur, or it's like where Lombok is. You have Padang on the bottom. You have Papua as well, which is part of Indonesia. And then you have the Betawi style. So many things, it's very diverse, right? And it's really hard to really pinpoint you know, Indonesian clothing all at the same time. Right. And also is where a fabric tour, interestingly enough, you know, all these different fabrics, not just batik as well, but like all these different ones. Um, I know a friend who really likes to go collect these different types of fabrics. Um, but yeah, it's uh, just a small showcase to everyone. And here's some Malaysian clothing. Um, the top right is Baju Melayu. Um, the one on the far right is more the traditional way you wear it. 
Now they have a modern version of it, which is the one on the left. Um, you can tuck it in, you can untuck it. It just depends. Um, on the bottom left, you have the baju kabaya, the far left. Um, the one right next to it is baju kurung. And in the middle is baju pengantin, the wedding outfit that usually people wear. Yep. Okay, so you want to do kahoot cool. game? Okay, let me, yeah, uh, let me stop presenting. Hold on. Hold on one second. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I guess we should have set this up prior to this. Um, Hanan, do you you guys use this before? Do you use the classic or team mode? Classic. Classic. Okay. All right. So everybody can join at this, I guess, at Kahoot.it and then, sorry. Why isn't it moving? And that's the game pin. Uh, Amir, I don't, I think we can see your screen at the moment. It's not, not? It's not loading. You want to stop screen sharing and then try it again? Yeah, okay, I'll give you, I'll type the pin in the group chat real quick. One, five, three, one, four, oh, six. So let me, let me, did that not go through? Hold on. Okay, so let me, okay, my computer is not working. Do you want to stop your screen sharing first? Um, yeah, my thing's not working for some reason. Okay. Oh, I have to resume it. Okay, hold on. Sorry, I'm having technical difficulties here. No worries. And if you can't um, do it yourself, we can try honest, or I can also try screen sharing. Yeah, it's making it wants me to shut my Zoom down. So maybe one of y'all have to do share this. Okay. Honest uh, or Hanan, can you share this one for me? Okay. Oh, Amir, can you exit out your um, Kahoot? Oh, okay. There you go. Should be, now. Should be good now. So we have currently 46 people. I know we have more people in the chat, so we're going to wait a little bit. About 10 minutes left, so should be good enough time. Or when are you guys able to... Uh, um, honest, are you able to screen share the Kahoot? Yeah, I'll let me. Let me I'm trying to. Okay, okay. Take your time. Give me a second. Okay, sign it now. Give it another minute and then we'll start the game. Amir, do you have it? Oh, do you have it open? Yeah, I have. Let me try screen oh. sharing one time. Hold on. Okay. Uh, share. Let me know if you can see this. You can see it now. Okay, cool. All right. Okay, so whenever we're going to start the game at 1237. Okay, we're going to start the game. Name that drink. This is a good drink. Well, what drink is this? Ooh. Ooh. I got it right. That's too much. Almost got it right. Nice. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. What are the girls wearing? What are the girls wearing? 
So all the answers were right. Oh, interesting. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> interesting. All right. A little bit of a trick question. <laughs> Let's see what people have to say. Mm. Oh, yeah, you had the Portuguese as well. Okay. Cool, cool. What is this vehicle called? Majority people got it right. Sweet. Looks like it's like there's a there's... Wow. Nice, nice. Nice. This is blasphemous. And it's on the lead. <laughs> How do you say sweet soy sauce in Bahasa Malaysia? You got it right. Cool. Dafa took the lead. What was Indonesia and Malaysia referred to pre independence? So yeah, there's three right answers here. So, so so the VOC was the company that came over of the Dutch company. So everything else was on point. Sense. But yeah. Cool. All right. What is the name of the food item on the bottom right? Not to this mooncake. So interesting enough, it's it has the Dutch word as well, spookuk, which comes from the Dutch. Interesting. So yeah, the term is actually matsale for Malaysians, not bule. So a little trick question. All right. Name that dish. Cool. Right. Jinko. In English, I've heard it being called um, dog fruit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So here, chim tangan means hand kissing. Which cultural influence did the word chium come from?
pretty even across the board. So, Qum, uh, breaking it down, comes from the word in Arabic, Shamma Yashumu, Shum. Qum. Interesting. Really interesting, yeah. So similar to what I have, the style, that's the lyric from Java. Interesting. Comes from orangutan, orangutan, forest man, Tarzan. Yeah. In fact, Malaysia has like hundreds of like about a little under a hundred different types of durian. Maybe wrong on that, but I think that's what I've heard. Yeah, right answer is Musan King. Bright yellow. It's supposed to taste really good. There's two right words, Durian Blandas in Malaysia. I think Sirsak is an Indonesian word. Yeah, Sirsak. Right. So still gonna need three more questions. The archipelago. How many so many numbers? <laughs> <laughs> People got this one right. Okay, Dems is still in the lead. In Malaysia. And then the last question. Answer is actually Putrajaya. They moved in 1999 from KL. We'll see our winner. Replaces Divs. 
Fantasy TV, and number one is. Congratulations, guys! Thank you, guys, for attending our uh, our session. We really enjoyed presenting to you guys. I really wish we had more time. <laughs> we could have gone out about it. <laughs> We get the rush at the end. But yeah. Thank you guys. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna close real quick. Um, thank you so much to Amir and Anna for your time and knowledge. I wish I could be more specific, but I, I will remind everyone that we do have a session in here right after, starting in about five minutes, inshallah. But again, thank you so much to Amir and Honest. That was so educational, but also really fun. You guys did awesome. Um, yeah. So I'm just going to close the session, inshallah. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Feel free to refer to the schedule on our website or Instagram page, but the one on the website is probably more updated. Um, again, our next session is starting in about five to ten minutes, so stick around or take a break. Assalamualaikum. Congrats to our winner.